Bienvenue to Swang to Reporters Plus here on France 24. I'm Mark Owen. We're all encouraged to recycle, even the things we wear. You may have bundled up old clothes you no longer use and dropped them off at a charity shop or at your local recycling depot. Ever wonder what happens next? Our old clothes sometimes go on a fantastic journey and are used again. Our film traces how recycled clothes binned in Paris end up, well, some of you may not have imagined. The American writer Mark Twain said, clothes make of the man. For people in Africa, our cast-offs are making a major difference. This report is by Sandra Leutens and Hamdi Talili. We own and wear more clothes now than at any point in human history. We buy four times as many garments now than we did 30 years ago. Outfits sometimes now last only a month in Western countries before being thrown away or donated. These clothing bins are a common sight in Europe and most people think they know what they're for. It's a commonly shared belief, but it's not quite true. Only 2% of these donations are given to those in need. The rest of them go elsewhere, sometimes traveling huge distances. We track some clothes from this Parisian bin on a 4,000 kilometer journey to the Senegalese countryside. Nobody here has any idea where they're from. I bought some clothes for my son. I have an only child. I bought him some clothes and some for my husband as well. I go to the market two or three times a year. I don't know where they're from. <laughs> the worldwide second-hand clothing economy is worth around 5 billion euros, a profitable secret of globalization and a business that affects all developing countries. Millions of tons of clothes thrown out in the West are resurrected then resold as part of a huge global market in which developed countries clothe those in developing countries without knowing it. Our inquiry starts in northern Italy, in Lombardy. We're meeting an employee of one of the biggest donation collection companies in the sector. My name is Khalid Zeki. I am Moroccan, I work in collection. I distribute flyers, flyers for the collection. This is your job, but do you know what's written on these flyers? No, I don't know what's written on them. I don't speak Italian. The flyers show a picture of a well-known Catholic nun, Mary Therese Giuliani, along with the logo of a charitable association. A reassuring image for those who are thinking of donating their clothes. People leave us their clothes, their shoes, their coats, they give us nice things, and then later my colleagues come and take them away in a van. On Mondays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I go from door to door giving out flyers. Then on Thursdays and Fridays, I take in the donation bins. None of these clothes will go to homeless Italians. The Catholic charity has simply sold the right to use its logo. Donations are generous. We have almost 40 people working in this team. We go across Italy to collect donations. I travel around 300 kilometers a day. In three days, I empty around 70 donation bins. I can load around 400 kilos from one single bin. Halim even went to collect donated clothes when there was an earthquake in the region. He was contacted by a local association. The system is the same almost everywhere in the world. Some donation bins are even directly operated by private businesses. Others carry the logo of an NGO, but resell the majority for exports. 
They call it transforming material donations into financial donations. The Red Cross, Caritas, and many other well-known NGOs do the same thing. In order to get a clearer picture of the situation, we went to the leading donation collector in France, Emos. They sort and sell some of their donations in France, but the rest goes abroad. They say there's a simple explanation. Most people think that when they donate some clothes, they go to the homeless. Therefore, there's this emotional aspect to the donation and they're generous. They give their clothes to help people sleeping in the street. We collect over 120,000 tons of clothes a year. The total in France is just over 200,000 tons. And there are around 150,000 homeless people. Imagine if they each received over a ton of clothes a year. Obviously, that's not the case. The clothes that are resold therefore make money for the NGO. Emos says they don't see that as a problem. We're not at all ashamed to say that it makes money for us, that we have a turnover. Recycling at Emos, not only textiles, currently generates over 250 million euros a year. That's true, but it doesn't benefit shareholders. It goes towards the people we aim to help. The more profit we make, the more people we can help. Give them a house or a job or help them financially. Emos says that's what we need to understand when we give a jumper or some trousers to an NGO. It's as if we are giving a small financial donation instead. An estimated 8 million tonnes of garments are collected every year in the West. That's the equivalent of around 50 billion T-shirts. The result is a worldwide turnover of at least 5 billion euros. These donations fund a rapidly expanding business that has already generated several million jobs across the world. The day's work is almost over for Halim. His truck is stuffed full. All he has to do now is empty his load of the day here, in a depot near Lake Como, one of many operated by the firm he works for. Go on, go on, more, more. OK. How many containers is that going to fill? Two? It's going to fill up two. This man is Shokri Shniti. He came from a poor background, working as a simple courier in the Tunisian market. Now he's the king of used clothes, a fortune made from what others throw away. We do a lot of work with charities. We have many depots all over the place. I work here in Italy and I take other suppliers from Canada, Switzerland or Germany. This mountain of clothes is called original stock, garments in bulk that have yet to be sorted. The first thing Shokri will do with this 40 tons of clothes is to return them to a marketable state a process that takes place in one of his factories on the other side of the Mediterranean. Once delivered across the sea, the clothes arrive in the Kairouan region in central Tunisia. This factory belongs to Shokri Shniti's company, Stief, one of 53 specialized locations in Tunisia for second-hand clothes. This is where many of the trousers, t-shirts and dresses thrown out by Europeans re-emerge with a market value. We do the first sorting here on the mat. We sort trousers, dresses and jeans into separate piles. Head of sorting operations, Monji Lefetti, has invited us into this factory, which has never been filmed before. That trolley holds pajamas, dressing gowns, that sort of thing. All of this area is for secondary sorting. This table is for short-sleeved T-shirts. 
They sort the clothes into first-rate, second-rate and third-rate piles. This man's T-shirt is a first-rate. The sorters have experience. They can tell if it's a brand, if there are small holes, if it's quite new. They're used to it. This is the room for the cream of the crop. Brand clothes that are high quality. A kilo of these clothes sells for 15 dinars, and for the third tier, it's between one and a half and two dinars. At one end, the top quality clothes, and at the other, what they call rags. These are generally mismatched or badly damaged clothes. Many of these items end up in India or Pakistan. There, they get transformed into completely new products, like bath rugs or insulation material. When the sorting is over, all that remains is for the loads to be pressed together to save space. This is where the girls clean the shoes. They're often dirty to begin with, so they're made new again in order to be sold. Foreign markets want quality, so that's what we aim for. Once they're clean, the shoes go to the drying room. Their new appearance gives them a bigger margin when they're put up for sale. This steep factory is one of the biggest in the country, with up to 1,000 full-time workers. They process the equivalent of 5 million T-shirts a month. The factory sells one-third of its output to local wholesalers, who supply the Tunisian demand for second-hand clothes. Mejdi Ghana, based in the city of Sfax, is one of their clients. His clothing kingdom is called Sfax 2000, with 400 shops, and the biggest commercial center in Tunisia, entirely dedicated to second-hand clothes. That's one dinar, 40 cents in your money. That's for the poor. I work with the highest quality first-rate clothes. The best ones are on the hangers and the other first-rate stuff is on the shelves. When a client comes in, they should see the lingerie, underwear, pyjamas and everything else. This is the half-season range. Next week, I'll have the summer range. Half of all clothes in Tunisia are second-hand. Clothes from somewhere else, already worn by someone else. T-shirts worn in the street often carry unexpected slogans in foreign languages. And market stalls carry football shirts for obscure small-town German football clubs. In such a successful business with large profit margins, it can be hard to avoid abuses of the system. In some countries, selling old clothes is against the law, like in Tunisia, where it's illegal to sell on old shoes. We're not allowed to sell old shoes. We work in a forbidden sector. I can't tell you where they're from because it's illegal. The custom authorities tell us that it's illegal. But we have many clients who work for customs. They come and buy shoes and then tell us that it's illegal. Second-hand clothes sometimes come with more than just their material. In this business, almost anything can be put to another use. On a return visit to the factory, we're shown other rooms filled with random objects, like coins, 
from all over the world, forgotten at the bottom of pockets. These are accessories and other things. We sort anything that arrives here. Electrical goods, wigs. Used clothes also have their place in the fashion world, especially for stylist Salah Barker. From his studio in Tunis, he transforms the old clothes and textiles he finds into entirely new creations. I started rummaging around at the used clothes shop and bought some tablecloths and curtains, which I turned into the jacket that you can see here. This used to be a rug for old women to put over their knees. I cut it up and added the curtains as a patch. This is a piece of Hindu cloth that I bought at the second-hand clothes shop. I don't know what to do with it. Perhaps something with sleeves like this, like a sort of kimono. But with reversible sleeves, perhaps. It could turn out quite nice because kimonos are now in fashion for men and women, so I should do it. It could be worn with some nice jeans. It's a bit hippie chic. This is Hafsia, the best second-hand clothes shop in Tunis. That's great material for me, a woven belt that I can unravel and use in a piece. How much is this? Five dinar? No, leave it, it's too expensive. I don't understand what this is. That's an old advertising. I could chop it up, use it for a back section. It's perfect. I think that's a sex toy. You can find anything here. And there's the key too, if you want. Salah's collector friend, Mouaz, shares his passion for second-hand clothes. His apartment is like a vintage treasure trove with masks from Venice, old dolls, and a huge collection of Hermes silk and Versace ties. Expensive clothes thrown out in Europe and bought for three times less the price from a Tunisian market stall. I found them like that among the scarves, sometimes for just 10 dinars. Sometimes the quality clothes that cross the Mediterranean are in such high demand in Europe that they return to the continent to be sold in fashionable boutiques in cities like Paris. A pair of Levi's, a nice pair of Adidas and a velvet jacket. Here's your change, 37, 40 and 50. Thank you, have a nice day. Jackie opened this vintage shop two years ago in a hip Parisian neighborhood. Most of these clothes have been imported from the Tunisian factory. Clothes originally from Europe, sometimes even from Paris. Our aim with this shop is to give the idea that our second-hand clothes are chic and in fashion. People pretty much wear the same everywhere in the world right now, but our clients want more personalized items. That demand has put the wind in the sails of the vintage market. Then there's the real vintage, like the dresses of our grandmothers. They're in high demand right now among young people. Those are real 501s. The 26 is really small. Here's the 27. Jackie's shop orders directly from the Steve factory in Tunisia to get the exact items they want. 
We ask them to work and prepare for upcoming fashions, and this is very important. We're heavily inspired by fashion magazines, like Elle or Madame Figaro. We buy them every week. We're always looking out for upcoming trends. We're basically always looking. So what we do is give them lists of what we want, what to prepare. Then the women who do the sorting know what we're after, that, for example, we want this particular shirt or that blouse or this jacket. We ask them to put aside anything they see that's similar. Lower quality, but wearable clothes go in the opposite direction, to sub-Saharan Africa. One third of commercial second-hand clothes end up here. Senegal imports over 7,000 tons of second-hand clothes every year. In the markets, they compete with traditional garments and low-price new stock imported from China. It's a bit of a necessity here. They love to dress up and look out for the latest fashions on television so they can look like the big stars. Since yesterday, I've only been wearing second-hand clothes. Otman is a second-hand clothes salesman in Luma, a weekly market that moves around Dhaka. You can find any type of clothes here, even ski gloves used by workmen on building sites. The clothing market has also created the need for other jobs, people to repair clothes with holes or tears, short and long sleeves to adapt to the warm climate and clean up items until they shine. Second-hand clothes work is called fogidiai. That means taking the clothes, dusting them off, and then selling them on. It's summer, so I've brought shorts for children and for adults. I've also got stockings for women to wear under their dresses. And I also have women's dresses too. In a few months, Otman will take his mobile market inland so that others can have access to his cheap clothes. 450 kilometers from Dhaka sits the small village of Sita Wulunyera in the Tombakunda region. Clothing habits here have also changed over time. I can show you the clothes I bought for my son. I bought them from the second-hand clothes shop and I also bought some for my husband. I buy second-hand clothes two or three times a year. It's not expensive, up to 300 CFA francs. I don't wear second-hand clothes for special occasions, though. I wear traditional clothes then. This is traditional cotton fabric made by hand. That's all we wore before. When we were young, our parents dressed us in it. But now we prefer cheaper second-hand clothes. Wearing second-hand clothes has become a daily habit for these villagers, especially for working in the fields. The main crop they cultivate is cotton, a material exported to other countries, most often to Asia, to be transformed into clothes for the Western market. Clothes that are destined to return here again at the end of their second life, completing a cycle that includes a long voyage across continents and starts at a donation bin on the corner of a city street.
Funny how it all goes full circle. But nice to see our perfectly wearable old clothes having a second life. I report them by Sandra Lutens and Hamdi Talili. See it again on our website, francevancat.com, and I'll post it on my social media accounts too. This is Reporters Plus. I'm Franz Van Kat. Stay with us. Thank you.